And what I found is that when I see something that needs changing, which is a revelation, and mm-hmm. it's usually how I think, hey, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. But when I see something that needs changing, I can't change myself. Mm-hmm. I, the only way I can do it is to submit myself to him and basically say, Lord Jesus, you know that I'm the way I am. You know it's not right. And if you don't do something, I'm going to do it again. Right. Now, that's my confession. Mm-hmm. It's up to him. You know, I'm submitting myself to him and saying, please change me. You know, when I'm nasty with my wife or I'm stingy or, you know, you know I'm, uh, I cut some people off in traffic or, you know, yeah, I, mean, I know nobody else that does that no, stuff but no, me. Not at all. You know, uh, <laughs> You know, these are the things I have to say, Lord, deal with me, change me. Mm-hmm. I want to enter into your kingdom and do it your way, not my way. Right. And that's the beauty of power in the mind. Amen. You know, that's why the scripture biblically says he gives the power to the cross. That's right. right. He gives the power, not you mm-hmm. have the power. That's right. Uh, you have to receive it. That's right. Uh, the power is from him to have the ability to believe and have the grace to, to do so. Mm-hmm. By the way, so that's very important. But let's talk about the, I know the Bible talks about various levels of a person's maturing process. I know another word we use for son is uh, sonship. You know, various levels of sonship. You know, mm-hmm. you know, the place you have in God. And the Bible tells us that a son composes of both a male and female is the Uriah type. Sure. So when we talk about sons in the Bible, we're talking about the male and the female, mm-hmm. according to the scripture. Yeah, that's our identity with him. And that's not our function, but that's our identity. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Um, one of the first levels of um, the, the maturing process is when one is uh, sort of in a childish stage. Mm-hmm. We generally know, I believe sometimes people refer to the Greek word, EPS, mm-hmm. um, where it's, it means one very immature, very childish. The newborn. Mm-hmm. Newborn, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. So... What about this newborn stage? I think that a lot of times, this is the most important aspect of Christianity. And that is that you allow a person to be a newborn. Mm-hmm. Because while, when they come into the kingdom, while they have a, a faith that's unfailing and a zeal for the Lord without knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, you see a lot of mistakes that they can make or, you know, uh, that's ahead of them by some of the things you hear and see. But yet, I think it's a very important stage because it sort of prepares you to begin to understand various aspects of God and, you know, about the nature of God himself. Um, what have you seen from your experience in this Nupio stage, this very beginning stage that you feel that's important? And also, how can one come about growing out of this stage to another level? I think one of the things, you know, it's interesting when you're, when you're a newborn, um, you know, God just challenged his, his blessing and his love. Yeah, absolutely. You. you know, you you, uh, you suddenly realize that this, uh, that this God that you uh, received and accepted is very, very real. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you hear about people that are, that are newborn and, uh, you know, they've got this idea that they can just pray for anything and ask for it. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it's just like a newborn baby. Sure. And, you know, you... You cry and, you know, you your mama, your daddy is there, you know, <laughs> older sister or whatever to take care of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you, you, you heard about people that, uh, you know, pray for a parking place in front of a building. And God opens it up for them. Sure. You know, or you know, that type of thing. Yeah. And, it, and it's not just one. Mm-hmm. It's over and over and over again. So, you know, these are some of the, these are some of the benefits yeah. of being newborn. And like you say, we need to let people be newborn when they are. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It, it, it's exactly um, Romans 12. Uh, I believe it's between verses 1 and 2, maybe even 3, where he will prove that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Mm-hmm. You look at that word good in the Greek, it basically means beneficial. And at one's at the old stage, what God is intent upon is showing this individual how it is beneficial to serve him. Yeah. And so he does these things so as to strengthen 
the faith of this individual. Here's the problem. Because people don't typically understand what God is doing, that He is very much involved in trying to strengthen their understanding that He's for them, that as they come out of that stage, and God tends to withdraw a little bit, they believe that somehow something happened that's an error in the way that they've tried to seek God or they've done something wrong. Right. Not so. It's just that as you mature, um, you know, instead of the first time you cry, your parents will do something different. Mm-hmm. You understand? And I think on the other side, for those who are disciples, someone who is brand new, as it were, mm-hmm. that we should be very excited for them and be happy with them but also um, not ascribe to them some sort of greatness due to the wonderful things that, that we see happening with them. Right. Because we should know, mm-hmm. as those who are older, that this is what God is doing. He's teaching to them. He's proving to them that it's beneficial to serve them. And at some point, not that God is going to withdraw from them. He did say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But at some point, He's not going to respond to everything you ask because he asked you. Right. Because he wants to take you to a place where you start responding to what he asks. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, see, again, it's back to this thing of obeying everything that I'm, I'm telling you next. Mm-hmm. You know, part of this is learning to hear the Lord's voice. Amen. Learning to be um, sensitive to him. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, it's almost like he's sensitive to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, which is fine, but he wants to get us to a place where we hear him and know him. So he has to, in, in some way, withdraw from us. Mm-hmm. You can say he doesn't go away, but he just kind of steps back. And this is the, the, the place we get in trouble is that since we prayed for the parking place, <laughs> you know, now when it's when God kind of steps back from us, we think I've just got to have more faith. I've got to believe. That God will do this. So again, it, it, the trap is that it puts it back on me. Mm-hmm. I've got to believe. I've got no, no. It's Him. That, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ that uh, uh, you know is the one that's that's drawing me to Himself mm-hmm. and away from myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So during this this process, that we have someone. Can one grow on their own? Because we're in a society now where people are buying their own CDs, they're getting their own tapes, they're getting their own books from numerous sources. You know, um, I have a brother who reads a new book every day from a different author. <laughs> and I, I feel like knowledge is good. Sure. You know, knowledge of the scripture is good. You know, get different tapes, get different perspectives. If that's, what you're, you know, if that's what you're on with, read. I have no problem with that. Mm-hmm. But at the same token, I know for a charity that the same brother not involved in any type of relationship with anyone, where he can be given more counsel, godly counsel, correction, instruction, Mm -hmm. exhortation, affirmation, you know, really important words, I believe, that just like you have a little cow, that they need, that you will have a person need from the faith. So my question is, you know, um, what is your take on people discipling themselves um, or being discipled by TV, radio, and so on? Or is this just a stage for them to kind of like stop doing that? Well, again, like you say, it's, it, it, it's not all bad, but it can be bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that's, uh, again, who, who disciples you? you know, put some name on TV and say, well, this person disciples me. Then you have no relationship with them. I mean, they may have some good stuff to say, mm-hmm. but you don't have any relationship with them. They're not somebody who can come along and say, hey, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I've been through this. Or... Hey, brother, you know, what's going on with you? Uh, you know, it's like the thing I mentioned about um, increasing my faith or, uh, you know, trying to, uh, through my efforts, to get God to do what uh, what he did previously. Mm-hmm. 